Okay, so we have our six inch circle with a four inch pocket and we have a one inch hole, right? So we're going to switch to manufacture mode. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to setup. And we're already on milling. Uh, now notice our stock is square, right? But we have a round part. Uh, we're gonna say that our round part is already around, right? Uh, all we have to do is cut this pocket and drill a hole in there. So, um, what I'm gonna do first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna change the orientation because notice how it came it opened up. Uh, my Z is pointing towards me. I want it pointing up uh, off the off the part, right? So I'm gonna select Z, and right here on the Z axis, I'm gonna click that. And let's select the top of the part and it now moved okay now say that your part came up like this your your orientation and you want the red arrow pointing to the right okay uh, this part is symmetrical so keep in mind if that happens because I do get this question sometimes uh, you would literally just rotate the part it, it's as simple as that all right. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the stock tab. Um, my mode, I'm going to put on relative size cylinder. Okay. Uh, see where it says 40 thousandths right here. If you were to zoom in really close, the distance from here to the edge of the stock, that's 40 thousandths right there. Okay, that's per side. All right, so so this would be 40 thousandths, and then the distance over here would be 40 thousandths. Okay, so, so your stock would actually be 80 thousandths big because it, it's 40 thousandths per side because it's radial. All right, uh, for, this, uh, for this exercise, we're just going to put that at zero. And let's see if I zoom in, notice there's no stock. Well, okay, so there looks like your stock. Well, it disappeared now. Um, keep in mind, your graphics card is only going to do so much. Now, now you can go into your settings and change like how good your graphics card is, but I wouldn't suggest it because it's just going to slow Fusion 360 down, you know, because. Not only does it have to generate your tool paths, but it has to generate tool paths and, you know, and you want to have like, you know, um, super good graphics too, you know, so that, that would slow your computer down. So I, I wouldn't worry about it because, because you can visually tell that this is a circle, you know, so there, there's really no reason to make it better. I mean, unless you have like a computer that's set up for gaming, you know. And you just want to, I mean, go for it. Okay, so I changed my, I set up my stock. And I'm going to jump back to setup, all right? And this is where I would normally select the stock point. But to be honest, my stock point's already set. At least I think it is. It looks like it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and click on it anyways. And remember, uh, round parts, you're going to put the origin in the middle, and rectangular parts, you're usually going to put it on, you know, you're going to pick a quarter. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. All right, so that's my setup. I like to name these. Uh, you don't have to on one operation. Now, once you start doing parts that have multiple operations, um, you, you kind of need to name them. If not, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to name this Op 1. All right, so I'm going to hit save. All right, so I have a pocket and I have a one inch hole drill. All right. Now, in all reality, you could do the pocket and the hole with the same tool uh, if you wanted to. Uh, but for this assignment, you, you know, 
we, we went over drilling last week, so I kind of want y'all to, you know, keep on drilling, even though it's an easy tool path. I mean, I mean, drilling is the easiest tool path, but, you know, we're, we're going to kind of stack these tool paths up on each other, okay? Uh, just slowly make it where you got more and more tool paths, all right? All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill it, all right? Um, so I'm going to go to drilling, and I'm going to select the drill. Now, y'all should have a drill from last week, but just in case you don't, I'm going to go ahead and go over making a drill. So I'm going I'm to create a new tool. I'm going to get a drill. This is going to be a one inch drill. So type in one inch drill. I'm going to go to the cutter tab to diameter. I'm going to make that one inch. All right. Now notice the input values underneath it, right? Now, if I hit tab on my keyboard, it's going to, it's going to jump to the next input box. All right. So notice when I hit tab, Notice how it changes the tool diameter, right? And I hit tab again. See, it's updating. Uh, it updates that shaft diameter. Uh, by default, that shaft diameter equals what whatever the cutting tool diameter is. All right, just by default. Now, you could change it, but just by default, it's going to equal that. All right, so I'm not going to worry about the shaft or the holder because we're just drilling it. Uh, one inch drill, we're, we're going to say we're cutting aluminum, we'll go 3,000 RPM, that's pretty fast, but we're cutting aluminum, so they can handle it, and we'll go 5 inches a minute. Uh, retract feed rate, it, it's not actually cutting on your retract feed rate, it's more, you know, it's retracting out of the hole, okay? Um, I'm gonna go to post processor. Well, yeah, we'll use tool number one. Okay, so on your bottom right, I'm gonna hit accept and I'm gonna hit select. All right, so you see that that one is drills there. I'm gonna go to the geometry tab and I'm gonna select this hole here. All right. All right, so notice this. You can't really see it. See, see how the the holes down here. Uh, you gotta be careful for this. Um, on my hive tab, when it's doing the depth, uh, um, you know, you know, we'll just simulate it, and and I'll show you what's going on. But um, what I'm gonna do. I want the drill body going through the part, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna click this option here for drill tip through bottom. See how it's going through the bottom. Um, and let's hit OK. Okay, so you're gonna have to be careful. Notice your toolpath line. You have a green line and a yellow, right? So your yellow is the lead in, your green's the the cutting feed rate. Now notice the yellow line, it basically it's going to wrap it down a VIN drill, right? So the problem is you're going to kind of just stab the stock. Um, what's going on is basically the hype settings is based off the top of this hole and not the top of the part. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the the top height instead of the whole top we're going to put it on stock top all right now notice when i change that you can see the preview updated uh i'm gonna hit okay and you can see the toolpath looks different i also have this yellow line going all the way down okay all right, so I'm going to name this one-inch drill. I'm going to hit OK. And 
All right, so now we're going to do a pocket operation right here, right? So I'm going to go to 2D pocket. And I'm going to create an email. Now, I know we already created an email, but just for the sake, just so y'all know how to, I'm going to create another one. So I'm going to go to plus. And I'm going to select the email. I'm going to make this a three-quarter inch in mill cutter I'm only gonna change this diameter right here so make it 0.75 and remember you get inner fractions in there and it'll, it'll do the math for you uh, so now I'm gonna go to the cutting data so I'm skipping the shaft in the holder tab those are unnecessary we don't need those um, make my RPM Eh, let's let's go five thousand. We're cutting aluminum. We'll say we got a, a high speed steel two fluter. Forty inches a minute looks good. Ramp plunge feed rate. Uh, we're, now your plunge feed rate on an end mill, you shouldn't really be plunging like vertically. Um, you know, you you should lead in. Um, like a helical lead-in or some kind of radial lead-in. Uh, so I'm getting that it's not actually cutting anything right here. So you can speed this up. Uh, we'll put it at 30. But at least you shouldn't be cutting anything. So basically, it's gonna it's gonna wrap it down to a good depth and then start feeding. Okay, it's not actually cutting. Uh, when it starts cutting, it's gonna turn on this cutting feeder rate or or the lead-in feeder rate. Post processor, yeah, we'll say tool number two. All right, so I'm gonna hit select. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my geometry tab and I'm gonna select this circle, right? And I'm cutting the inside, so remember your red arrow, you know, make sure it's on the right side. Well, well not on the right, but you know. It's uh, within the correct boundary that you're cutting within. So I'm going to go to the height tab. And this is where you get to pay attention. Um, so to, you need to tell it the depth, right? Uh, so what you want to do on this bottom height right here, I'm going to put this on selection, okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to let me select the face of that. Uh, so I put it on selection, and I'm going to click this bottom reference right here. All right, so then I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to actually click that floor. All right, you can see it selected that. Um, that's going to be the bottom. That's how deep I'm going, right? Pass this tab. Uh, we're not going to leave any stock. And uh, we got a one inch in mill. We're cutting aluminum. We're just, you know, we're going to keep this one simple because uh, it's the first time y'all done a pocket operation. So we're just going to go full depth right in. Now, because we drilled a hole right there, um, it would be a good idea to utilize that hole and drop the in mill in there. Uh, so th this red tool path, what you're seeing is. A, helic, a helical lead-in, okay? So it's spiraling down into the material. And that, that that makes the tool last longer and cut better, you know? So you are you know you keep that that load off of your the tip tool or the tip of the tool. Um, but since we drill a hole here, what we can do is we actually go to edit, and instead of a a ramp, I'm gonna put this on either pre-drill or plunge. Uh, I think it was plunge. And right here where it says position, pre-drill position, I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna select that circle. All right. Now I want I want to select the center of the circle. All right. So if you get the edge, you know, try it again and get the center. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. All right, so if you look at the toolpath now, 
that lead in is going to vertically lead straight in to x and y zero to the correct depth and then it's going to interpolate the hole right so so it's going to look like this all right that, that was a little fast let's play that again All right. And I just simulated the pocket. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name this uh, four inch pocket. I, I just like naming these. All right. So to simulate both the drill and the pocket, I'm going to click on the op one. And then I'm going to go to simulate. Okay, so it went, Fusion 360 just did a new update like a couple days ago, and their simulator is super quick now. So you kind of got to slow it down. All right, so it's going to come in. It's going to cut out. It's going to cut everything out. All right, so I'm going to hit OK. All right, so I'm going to right-click on this operation, and I can post-process it. If I wanted to, I could go to, like, machine time. It would tell me how long it's going to take. You got that? Uh, okay, machine time, 1 minute and 18 seconds. I have a feeling it's going to take longer, but... All right, so I can right-click... On the operation, I'm gonna go to post process. I'm gonna use this uh, Haas Mill Pre NGC. If that doesn't come up, you know you could select what brand mill you're gonna use. You know, select milling. You know, think of these as filters right here. So go down to Haas Automation, and this is the Haas Mills. I have available. I'm gonna use this pre NGC and I'm gonna name this one O two four. All right, so I'm gonna hit post. And here's my G code.